the anima is the archetype of life and it is uh, when when the anima is negative it is uh, the, the impulse to dream about life and to make wishful fantasies about life instead of living life and that's why uh, vampires and Draculas and, and the creatures alike always suck one's blood. The blood is the emotional ac active psyche in us, the affect psyche. And such people have no activity left or no life activity left. They just sink into a passive wishful dream. The dream tries to tell him it's a ghost which is haunting me because actually it's haunted not by reality, it's haunted by a fantasy which is draining his whole psychic energy. At the end of the dream, the man's unable to escape from the vampire. It's going to suck the blood out of him. How would you interpret that? That is really the characteristic of most negative or split-off complexes. If we reject or split off some complex of our psyche, then it begins to sap our energy secretly, if, behind our back, so to speak. And then it turns slowly into what, what is aptly represented by the image of the vampire, something which attacks us in the night and sucks all our blood. People feel they don't know. They, they, they come into analysis and they say, I feel listless, I just feel tired, I, I just don't want to do anything. I wake up already in the morning depressed. Nothing means anything to me anymore. They are, we could answer to them, you are probably sucked by a vampire. You are bloodless. You, you have no life impulse, no, no pleasure in life anymore, no interest or anything. And then you generally find that this vampire is just a, a, a split-off complex which has been split off so uh, radically and so uh, powerfully that it can only sap energy anymore. It cannot manifest in any other way anymore. Why are the movies about death goddesses and vampires so popular? I think all uh, movies which touch essential uh, psychological uh, facts, the movies nowadays more or less replace the fairy tale telling and, in, and the myth telling. It's our modern form of myth and fairy tales. And therefore, movies which tell about the inner world, like fairy tales do, are much more attractive to the public. Because we really need myths to have an orientation or to have uh, mapping out uh, the, the dream world or the unconscious. And in past time, there were the innumerable myths of vampires, uh, and, uh, which fascinated people. Tales retold all over the world. In China, for instance, you have a, a whole host of ghost stories where a man uh, meets a fox and then the fox turns uh, is, is really the ghost of a dead and turns up as a beautifully uh, made-up girl and he has a marvelous life with her till one day he discovered that she is an evil demon, she is a skeleton. And then sometimes it ends bad, she pulls him into death, or he can, with the help of priests and magicians, free himself from the demon. And we, for instance, in the Swiss Alps, we have stories that our cowherds high up in the mountain who have to live there the whole summer alone without having women. Every night the dockily comes, uh, that is a, a female ghost, comes through the, the door invisibly and rides them all the night and they, they have so that they have sexual pollutions and in the morning they wake up completely exhausted and can't practically move anymore. Overwhelmed, so to speak, by sexual fantasies and by the unlived life. If the man's feelings are locked in to the mother complex, if his life is being sucked away by the vampire, then how can he transform those feelings? How can he get free of the mother complex? <laughs> I, I once met the dream of a young man who, had, uh, who was living still with Mama. He was 29 and had never had a girl uh, in, in his room. And uh, so we seriously discussed the possibility of getting a room outside his mother's home. And he was terrified. 
he, he was a very sensitive, delicate boy, and his mother was a very brutal, strong personality, and he was just terrified of, of the moment to tell mother, look here, I am going to take a room outside, and I'm not going to live with you anymore. And when he was kind of trying to make up his mind, he dreamt that he had to slay the dragon. So that, in that case, it means actually that though it seems such a, to us, little thing to tell mother, I have to room, for him that was slaying the dragon. It was overcoming a monstrous neurotic difficulty within himself. His whole mother complex, and not only facing the scene of his actual mother, but uh, overcoming also the inertia and the uh, anxiousness of his own mother complex. His mother had sowed in him uh, an anxiousness, a fear of life. He had to overcome a terrific fear of life to make that step. And that is an, uh, an archetypal motive all over the place that the young man has to do the heroic deed of killing his mother or the mother dragon or the mother demon, which is what is anxious or lazy or afraid of living a masculine life.